This is Michael Popak with Illegal AF Hot Take. Let me address what's on everybody's mind. Melania Trump, is she going to appear in the criminal courthouse for Donald Trump at some point in the next six weeks? She hasn't showed up yet. Is she going to stand by her man and send a signal to the jury and to the criminal justice participants that she is somehow supportive of Donald Trump, especially about a criminal trial where he is accused of having had sex outside of his marriage, including while Melania Trump was pregnant with Barron um, at, at one time, and that there was a catch and kill program to pay off these women and have it hidden on the books and records of the company in order to uh, help Donald Trump in his election and electoral chances against Hillary Clinton. The catch and kill program as election interference. Is she going to appear? Or is she going to testify in some way on behalf of Donald Trump? Or would the Manhattan DA somehow try to call her, get around spousal privilege, and have her testify? Or is she just going to lay low and we'll never see her at all like we never saw her at the New York Attorney General $465 million judgment against Donald Trump as a fraudster. We never saw Melania at the at not one but two E. Jean Carroll cases in which he was a judge to be a serial or at least a rapist under New York law and uh, now responsible for punitive damages totaling up to $100 million. We never saw her there. We never saw her at an arraignment. We never saw her when uh, uh, any arraignment, Georgia, New York, a DC election interference, Mar-a-Lago, no arraignment, no Melania. Now look, I've done some earlier reporting based on information that I've gathered from people with credi- credible corroborated information, including former best friends of Melania Trump, former press secretaries from Melania Trump, that she is pushing Donald Trump to testify. Look, I, I could flip a coin and it's on a knife's edge. And I'm talking to you now from a 30 year plus trial lawyer as to whether Donald Trump takes the stand. I don't think he should. If I were his lawyer, I would tell him don't go any anywhere near testifying in front of the jury. Juries don't like Donald Trump. He's 30 and zero. He's 0 for 30 with juries, criminal and civil. And when he testifies or tries to take control of his trials, bad things happen. Like bad $465 million civil fraud judgments, 100 million of rape and punitive damage judgments, you know, those type of things. Now let's go back to Melania. First of all, she's been completely absent, both from the campaign trail, from Mar-a-Lago where she lives and where Donald Trump conducts most of his political business and holds most of his fundraisers, fundraisers and gives most of his speeches lately she is nowhere to be found and all she has to do is step out of out of their private quarters and come thumbs up and comes downstairs and come downstairs and yet she doesn't she always finds something else to do Uh, i'm at the spa i'm out Uh, and her social media is also completely devoid of any real support for donald trump i mean completely i mean you don't see her you know reposting uh commenting nothing she is. She was already in a, as Marine Dowd in the New York Times said today. She was. She's already an elusive uh, first lady who we barely ever saw. You know, it always. I always find it laughable when people on the far far right say she was the best first lady we ever had. She looked great in all the outfits she wore, like she was some sort of hanger, like a fashion model for clothing, instead of having a substantive role as the first lady of our United States. Put that aside for a minute. Here. Uh, she ha- she, there's no social media presence I know of, and I've looked, in which she supports uh, Trump. Sure, she's finally appearing at Mar-a-Lago, hosting the Log Cabin Republicans, which are uh, gay, uh, you know, LGBTQ Republicans. Yes, they have an organization. It's been around for a while called the Log Cabin Republicans. And I guess they like Melania and have made her the keynote speaker. And she's going to be at Mar-a-Lago stepping out of her bedroom to go address the Log Cabin Republicans. And when she talks to them, she talks about, we need to unite the country, which seems to be the exact opposite of the messaging that Donald Trump is giving, which is this uh, dark, uh, uh, apocalyptic, a uh, dystopian world view of what America will be if he's not reelected or not elected again. I mean, when you when you hear, I mean, it reminds me of that now famous um, uh, episode or quote from George W. Bush, 
who was basically forced to attend the inauguration of Donald Trump in 2016, already friends with the Obamas. He sat next to Michelle Obama and listening to the dark, apocalyptic, uh, dystopian worldview of Donald Trump during his first inauguration. You know, it's supposed to be uplifting and optimistic. He turned to, uh, George W. Bush turned to Michelle Obama and said, that is some crazy and weird shit. <laughs> I mean, I thought just a little anecdote there from, from George W. Bush. Same thing here. You know, the fact that he's split screen, you know, Melania is hanging out with her log cabin Republican friends and say, we got to unite the people. And then you've got in the same split screen, Donald Trump talking about, you know, um, migrant criminals uh, raping and pillaging and committing crimes because of Joe Biden and the world is on fire because of Joe Biden and you know all of that that makes for it reminds me of the jacket she wore going up Air Force One I don't care do you yeah I do actually Melania so Melania though as a um, sort of a powerful force on Donald Trump is also my focus here on the hot take sort of like you know, when we finally figured out that the tides, you know, the ocean tides, the water tides were controlled by the moon and, the, and those like, same thing here. Donald Trump is sort of, you know, his water table internal is sort of impacted by Melania and not pissing her off. I mean, look, the reporting has been every time that she is, is compelled to do something, like be the first lady, go to the White House, a campaign for Donald Trump. Donald Trump has to has to amend the prenuptial agreement and give her and or Barron more money, which is the only child from that particular marriage, and to make sure that he, Barron, is equal to the other kids. Now look, none of the other kids have appeared either. I mean, uh, Don Jr., Eric, Ivanka, absent. Weren't there for the arraignment, not there uh, for any day of the four days, first four days of the trial or jury selection. Not at all. Now, the judge has already indicated that maybe Melania Trump could be a witness in the case. Um, I think I agree with most commentators when they say that would be a terrible decision by Alvin Bragg because it could backfire and only curry favor and sympathy for both a Melania and then, by extension, on Donald Trump. Why do it? There's nothing that she needs to testify as a key fact or probative fact in the case, in the criminal case. Now, Karen McDougal is different. Karen McDougal is going to testify. We know David Pecker is going to testify on day one. The National Enquirer uh, publisher who devised with Donald Trump the catch and kill program, which is at the heart of the indictment. You know, Michael Cohen's going to testify eventually. Not, you know, not the first week. Trust me. I think it's later in the week after lots of other people bolstering Michael's credibility and the testimony are testified first. David Pecker, all the checks getting into evidence, and Karen McDougal. There was three people that are at the heart of the Catch and Kill program who were the targets of it. One is Dino Sajudin, who got $30,000 to keep a story quiet about a possible... A child out of wedlock that Donald Trump had with somebody in one of his buildings. May or may, or may not have been true. Uh, Dino certainly got paid $30,000 to keep it quiet. He's not testifying either. The Manhattan DA has made that clear. Karen McDougal, though, Playboy Playmate, who Donald Trump has, has religiously, and uh, that's, I'm sorry, who's consistently said that he did not have an affair with, is going to be testifying that she had an ongoing affair with Donald Trump and was paid $150,000 through David Pecker of the National Enquirer on behalf of Donald Trump and Michael Cohen in order to keep her story secret. She's going to testify. Now, the part that the judge said that she's not going to be able to say because he's afraid it could really prejudice the jury against Donald Trump is that she knows that that affair was going on while Melania was pregnant with Barrett. Right? So if they, now could Trump call Melania? I mean, what's, what is Melania going to say? That she wasn't pregnant with Barron? That, that she knows for a fact that she has evidence? She's a precipient witness with knowledge that there wasn't an affair? And it's basically been admitted that there was an affair. She's got the photos, Karen McDougal. She's got the receipts. She's got the $150,000 payment. And she's got the signed a non-disclosure agreement. 
I mean, I don't think Melania walks into that. She's not voluntarily doing anything, uh, either campaigner, campaigning for Donald Trump or in his case. Could it help Donald Trump if Melania sat beside him or she wouldn't be able to sit beside him in the, in the well of the courtroom? Sat behind him in court? Sure. The press would go crazy. It would change the weather in the room. Everybody would be excited. I guess we'd have to talk about it on Legal AF on the Midas Dutch Network. It would be, I guess, interesting for a day or two. But, you know, with her facial expression and her arms folded, you know, we've seen this. You know, the wives who are the victims of sexual misconduct by husbands who are politicians having to stand beside them and what that looks like on camera. We've seen it over and over again, state, and federal, presidential, and the like. Uh, and it's not just Hillary Clinton, it's others. And that never, it makes for great optics. And we know that Melania can't hide, she has no poker, poker face. She always looks like she's pissed off at, at Donald Trump. She Now, she won't hold his hand. She won't refer to him as her husband. She won't uh, uh, attend any, uh, any events with him. I defy you to find me a picture recently, other than, I think there's one, where she just happened, I think they rolled her out in her bathrobe at Mar-a-Lago to stand next to him. So her attending, I don't think is happening. Could happen, and I'll report, I'll report on it quickly, if it does. Testifying, I don't think she testifies either. But that doesn't mean she's not having an impact on Donald Trump in the defense. Because the, the reporting is, including from her former press secretary and best friend, is that uh, Melania's livid, that this trial on the heels of E. Jean Carroll, where he was a judge to be a rapist under New York law, is now coming up. That he had sex outside the marriage time and time again while he was married to Melania. I mean, that's one of the reasons he says, it wasn't election interference, I just didn't want my wife to find out. Some version of that. And so she's embarrassed by this. She also says it's a witch hunt and it's election interference privately to friends. And she sides with Trump on that. But say what she wants. This is going to be six weeks of must-see reporting about the Trump trial until we get a jury verdict of 12 Manhattan citizens, residents, who need to vote up, thumbs up or thumbs down, based on the overwhelming evidence that is provided to them, including witness form, uh, audio recordings made by, by Michael Cohen secretly of his conversations with Donald Trump are going to be front and center, and all the other participants in the Catch and Kill program, or in his campaign, like Hope Hicks, who are going to have to testify about what the campaign was trying to do to tamp down on these terrible stories while Donald Trump was in a fight for his life or his presidency against Hillary Clinton. So that's all going to come up. So the role of Melania is interesting, both legally and emotionally, psychologically on Donald Trump. The rumor is she wants him to testify in order to dispel and say it out loud, not just to the jury of 12, but to Melania, that he did not have sex, you know, sounds like Bill Clinton now, with that porn star, <laughs> Stormy Daniels, and doesn't know anything about it. But he can't do that, because he's already said that there was payments made to this person for an NDA and paid for by Michael Cohen and recorded his legal expenses. He said it on the second day of trial. Take a listen. Thank you very much. This is a trial that should have never been brought. It's a trial that is being looked upon, looked at all over the world, they're calling. They're, they're looking at it and analyzing it. Every legal pundit, every legal scholar said this trial is a disgrace. We have a Trump-hating judge. We have a judge who shouldn't be on this case. He's totally conflicted. But this is a trial that should never happen. It should have been thrown out a long time ago. If you look at uh, Jonathan Jeremy, Andy McCarthy, all great legal scholars, there's not one that we've been able to find that said this should be a trial. I called a, I was, I was paying a lawyer and marked it down as a legal expense, some accountant, I didn't know, marked it down as a legal expense. That's exactly what it was. And you've been indicted over that. I should be right now in Pennsylvania, in Florida, in many other states, North Carolina, Georgia, campaigning. This is all coming from the Biden 
White House, because the guy can't put two sentences together. He can't campaign. They're using this in order to try and win an election. And it's not working that way. It's working the opposite way. So check it out. Legal expense. It's called legal expense. That's what you're supposed to call it. This is trouble. Get it down and all that. Nobody's ever seen it. Nobody has ever seen anything like it. So thank you very much for coming. I'm now going to sit down. I'm going to call for many hours. I am now going to sit down. The voters understand it. All you have to do is look at the polls. This is a sham trial. And the judge should recuse him. Do you know this is what I think? Thank you very much. So okay, that's going to be played in court, by the way. I don't know about opening statements, but sometime uh, they're going to play that in court, especially if Donald Trump decides to take the stand. So the question is, is he going to suddenly become chivalrous and valiant Donald Trump and uh, speak directly to um, Alania and say he didn't do this thing? I doubt it. I doubt, and I, you know my position. I've said it over and over again about whether Donald Trump's going to testify. The question is, is she going to put her pointy stiletto shoe up his you know what and make him testify that's a different story that's a different calculus as of right now she is clearly not in his camp i mean between the non-hand holding the non-appearances the nothing on social media even when she hosts something like the the gay republicans she uh, takes positions that seem to be counter to the arguments that he's making to the american people in his closing argument you know like that um, and so um, we're going to continue to follow. If I'm wrong and she shows up to try to show some moral support or any of the kids show up to show some sort of moral support, I'll report on it right here on Legal AF and on the Midas Touch Network. Join us on Wednesdays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time and you'll find out why we call the podcast Legal AF. It sits at the intersection of law and politics so you don't have to. We curate the top four or five developments in law and in politics, and we discuss them. Wednesdays, I do it with Karen Friedman, Ignifolo, Saturdays with Ben Mycellus, and then on hot takes like this one about every hour right here on the Midas Touch Network. Leave me a thumbs up and comments. It helps. And then if you like what I'm doing, go over to playlists on the Midas Touch YouTube channel. Get them to 3 million free subscribers. That would be nice too. And look for Michael Popak and you'll find all my body of work. So, until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting.